Welcome to Wish I Could Play, a podcast dedicated to people who have always wanted to get into tabletop role-playing games, but have never had the chance. My name is Morshadi, here to say you can. In this inaugural episode, we are talking with Tiana from Ogden, Utah, about their experiences in the TTRPG space, what games they've always wanted to try, and what's kept them from taking that leap. Thank you so much, Tiana, for talking with me on this episode. How are you doing today? Good. I'm so excited. I know. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> um, why don't you tell us a little about about yourself? Uh, well, my name is Tiana, and I am in my mid-40s and a girl, so my pronouns are she, her, in case you wanted to know. Thank you, yes. And <laughs> um, I, so, you know, it being in, in my wonderful Gen X space, I have a lot of life experience, and role-playing games were kind of a big deal in my youth the people just before me were that's that was an obsession and um I always wanted to be a part of it but it's like I always kind of missed that mm -hmm. and so I'm really excited to talk about that part of my life and then I've had a wonderful just set of experiences with education and different jobs and I work a lot in creative fields so anything that enhances your imagination, gives you a chance to interact with people, is just so meaningful to me. And then, you know, I just like talking about things. So <laughs> that brings me to you. Well, it brings me to me. Everyone knows things about me. No, they don't. They don't know anything about me in the podcast space. Um, in regards to the filmmaking experience, have you done anything that anyone would know about? Uh, well, I do a lot of independent, small productions. A lot of times I work on student productions in the Utah area. Uh, I have worked on a few things that people would have heard of like 15 years ago. So there was a show called What Not to Wear on the Learning Channel. And um, I was getting the secret footage of people who were then going to be told that they needed to throw away all their clothes because their style was horrible. So I got to... <laughs> um, stock people with a little camera and that was kind of cool too because my son who was six at the time got to come with me for some of that so that was cool and then um there was another reality show called nashville star so it's like a country american idol mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um i got to do some um footage you know just catch some footage and do production assisting on there and then there is a little independent horror film that i don't no one has seen but it's awesome it's called unearthed that I worked on and I just did everything on that. I was everywhere from inside the office, um, helping with special effects, camera work, the, picking up people from airports, just kind of everything. So just the, the gopher on the on the team? Yeah, I mean, the the kind word is production assistant. They That's a good term because then no, you just do whatever, you know? So, um, so that's as far as things that people would have known, that's what I've done. But then I've worked on my own projects and just other like projects of love, just people that's just a dear thing that they needed help with. So a lot of video editing, cinematography, sound capturing, things like that. Okay. Um, now you said that uh, you're, you're Gen X. Um, so you would have probably encountered TTRPGs during, during what would be considered now the satanic panic. What was oh, something yeah. that you... Uh, had heard about with TTRPGs during that time? So that was, it's an interesting one because um, I don't come from a family that jumps on the, oh my God, that's Satan stuff, even though they're religious. I So it was like happening around me, but I wasn't experiencing that behavior. It was shocking to me that people were act actually behaving that way. Because what I saw was a game that was fantasy. I saw people gathering around it and they were using their imaginations and spending time together. I also did, having grown up in a town that I grew up in, saw saw people, you know, getting high and drunk and, you know, not living their best lives while doing that. But um, I think they were doing that with every activity <laughs> they did. Yet I um, drink while while playing games. While playing games, heck okay. yes. I mean, this was because this would have been like early to mid eighties, you know. Um, it, the thing is, so I'm Gen X, but I'm that young Gen X, you mm -hmm. know. I'm kind of right at the end of it. So the people who were playing at hardcore would have been, um, generally speaking, they were 
I'd say about five, between five and eight years older than me. So I mostly was watching it. My babysitters would play. But a big thing that I did note notice is I really never saw girls playing it. It was always boys. So they would never, would, would they uh, keep you out of that just, or would there be a separation from it? Uh, I was just never invited. You never it would invited. have never been a thing. Yeah. So a lot of my friends had older brothers who played and they would invite their brother, you know, the younger brothers who were my friends to play, but it just was assumed I wouldn't even want to. Okay. Um, what game, I mean, in that leaping from that, what, uh, what games have you heard of, uh, TTRPG games, tabletop games? Well, <clears throat> obviously I've heard of Dungeons and Dragons and I've heard of Warhammer, but for until very recently, I didn't know that was an RPG. I thought it was just models. <laughs> Well, I mean, it is a lot of models. And if, uh, I mean, if you have a lot of money, it's all the models. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I've noticed. It's very recently that I knew there was any story component to it. Um, and then I, and then the more recent, like Powered by the Apocalypse, just that encompassing gameplay style mm -hmm. heard of. And then I've heard of a lot of games, but we should note very importantly here that I, really suck at remembering titles of things that like that could be songs movies books whatever and it could be a book I've read like 13 times I'm not gonna remember the title of it and it also means I may not remember the writer the creator either like if I hear it I might recognize it but I won't so you should know that um some games that I have in my possession that I haven't played but they looked interesting um and again i can't remember titles i typed them on a spreadsheet that i don't have open hold on um uh, luckily you sent that spreadsheet to me you uh, <laughs> a couple of them actually are really really interesting one is called burning wheel um uh, which is a, a pretty cult classic one um it comes in a really big thick tome uh do you know any what what can you tell me about that one well first of all i have the tome so I, I want the codex, even though I still like, okay, so the reason I know about it is my son, who is 24 now, has been playing Burning Wheel with his friends since they were, I want to say 16. Uh, and I've been able to overhear their games. And this is a group of kids that were going to be really creative anyway, but they the way they worked with it, the way they utilized the story and the worlds that they build together were so fascinating. And then the way consequences existed in the game and how it's it, it re really requires working together to create the world and the stories. It was just so fascinating to me. I could make movies out of some of the things that they've done. And then with my son enthusiastically telling me how their campaign went, uh, it just had me so engaged with it. In fact, um, when he was 20, we went and got tattoos together and we got the burning wheel tattoo matching. We each got that tattoo. And, um, so it's just kind of, it's weird that I haven't played it, but I feel so connected to it. <laughs> and he even tells me, cause I was, I was like, I would sit outside and hang out with the cat, but I don't have anything to read. And he handed me burning wheel. He's like, you have something to read. <laughs> Which I don't. I've never sat and read an RPG. So that's a that's a that's a thick book to read. Just uh, uh, sitting outside with a cat. Yeah, obviously over time. <laughs> over time, for sure. Uh, another one you have here is uh is Wise Women. Uh, what 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 can you tell me about that one? Because I do know that one. That is a Power by the Apocalypse game. Which one did you say? Sorry, my uh, Wise Women. Wise Women. Well, this one uh, was actually recommended to me by you, and it's you know. I like things that really lean hard into feminine elements or woman. And, and I, and I don't even mean in any kind of cis way, just that femininity and that this really addresses um, things that are important historically, kind of culturally, but it also lets you just get your imagination and dive into it. And it's nice and small. I, I really like, I don't get overwhelmed when I look at a smaller rpg playbook mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's really that one in a nutshell i'd say that's the case also with um well any of the others that i listed you have the list <laughs> uh 
yeah the smaller paper the ones that i i can tell on here would be like uh, another one would be plays the thing and like shinobi gami uh right two other so ones. those mm-hmm. those speak deep to my nerd too i mean shinobi gami um i've it'd be like a, a slight naruto uh based one uh i would i would probably compare it to that um it's not but it is <laughs> Right. And it's, well, and anything ninja has always been huge to me. Martial art. And I, when I say ninja, I'm referring to all of the martial arts. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, so I, I don't know that just, I just love it. I would love to just imagine a space like that where you're training really hard in certain ways and you have to, you have like a motive and a reason to protect or to fight, but I don't know. There's just something awesome about it. Plus Japanese culture. I am not the only um, American woman to have like an inexplicable obsession with Japanese culture. So indeed. So what is it that, what is it about the smaller books that draws you uh, versus the, the thicker ones? It really is the, that it's just not as overwhelming. It doesn't seem as daunting to approach and because it's shorter, if I don't understand something, it's easier to look back through and find clarity in, in the book when it's larger or when there's multiple books attached to a game, where do I even find the time? You know, especially on my own, how do I figure this out on my own? How do I visualize what it is I'm reading? You know? Yeah. And that's what I I mean. I have the same problem. Like I have, you know, children of my own, it's uh, having, bigger books and bigger times is having to find and carve out that time to be able to to be able to do that and sometimes it's fe- having that feeling of well i'm doing this and that means i'm not taking the time to uh, give to my family and so mm. where's that guilt that that guilt you know taking care of myself balance that's such a good <laughs> i'm so happy you make that point because that i think is um this is why i'm so excited about your podcast there are so many adults who want to play these games, but past experience was this is how you spent all your free time. Because if most of us were playing these or introduced to these when we were young, we didn't have a lot of uh, the other types fun distractions that we have. You know, like we had TV, we had the radio and and the stereo with our um, music and books, but we didn't have necessarily the internet. And all of the wonderful stuff that's on the internet to distract us, which meant we could sit down with all of our friends after school and play for four hours. We still had time to do homework. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, I feel like we mentally imagine that that's still how you have to play a game. And, um, but I, I know from creative experience that it's possible to do something like this and it can be an ongoing campaign but maybe you only meet one hour every other week it's still possible to do that and if people who are adults especially understood that they would be able to find this amazing outlet so let me ask you a question if you if you had the if you had the choice to be able to take the time to run to run something what would you what would you run what would i run yeah. so um what do you mean like what kind of story what kind or... of game what kind of story things of that nature you know i mean for me it's always going to be a little bit um fantasy but not too hard i so as much as i love role playing i'm self-conscious about embodying the role so most mm-hmm. characters i'm going to play are going to be some aspect of myself uh i'm not going to do a voice um but that doesn't mean my energy isn't different you know um so but i like to be able to play grown-ups i i am feeling like too many games are made so that the characters are supposed to be teenagers and i'm not comfortable playing a teenage character i don't want to especially like if it's a game that's got like um you know more more sexual or violent content I would like for the other characters to also be in my age range, you know. <laughs> There's something like uh, Monster Hearts would not be something that you would want to do. That that one's based in uh, it's by Avery Avery Alder. Um, that one's based in high school. Uh, you're playing the personification of supernatural beings, but they're all teenagers. It's very um, sexual, very kind of there is vi- violence in in terms of social interaction. 
Yeah. Well, and the thing about that is, and this is an important um, obstacle that I've encountered in the past, there, sh- there is flexibility with that. If you're familiar with the contents of that game, I think it's very possible to adapt it to take place in an older environment. So it could take place in college or in an office space or something and be adult characters. I think uh, that is important. I mean, all these books, these playbooks are really guides. And a lot of people, I think, forget that. So I think I could take Monster Hearts and turn it into something that was really meant for someone 30 or older to play in a 30 older kind of space. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I wouldn't want to play it because I think people would just expect everyone to be a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, um, this is a popular, especially, especially, um, it's coming back as well. I mean, it's always been popular since this came out, but, uh, with stranger things, the last season coming up, uh, kids on bikes, which is very, uh, stranger thingy. You're all, uh, little, ki- you know, little kids, stranger things, kids age, um, essentially discovering things uh, but that is the purpose of the book is you're all kids uh, but it's very supernaturally right it's not yeah. like you're going to be going in and you know like, discovering too much gore i think i i mean that's a little bit different right um you're because you're not well the nature of those kinds of stories they tend to make those children mature and independent anyway like the characters in a story like that like it um or you know stranger things any anything where or even harry potter where the kids are living in their own isolation and they're thinking i've got to save the world and they just take it on themselves um there's an adultness automatically given to them that also takes out most of the sexual elements to it Mm -hmm. now it might be a bad example for anyone who's read the book because they're like and stephen king has expressed that you know, maybe I'd write it differently now, but, (laughs) um, but ultimately most of the time, those kinds of stories, the kids are really just younger versions of adults, you know? So I don't know. That one's a little different. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's uh, yeah. He, he, he went through a time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Definitely has, has stated that he would change. He would change that ending now. If he, that piece, that 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 piece of it, that aspect of it. (laughs) Have you had any experiences with any any tabletop games at all? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I couldn't, I can't be forty six and in at all interested in RPGs and not have had some encounter with D and D. So definitely D and D. Um, though all these arguments about uh, version four is better than version two or whatever, and I maybe just offended people because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Listen, I don't... listen. Uh, as as um, the host of this podcast, I'm wanted to tell everyone <laughs> I liked fourth edition, and uh, you can just drop me now if you don't like that. Right, and for me, like they're all there's all value in all of it, so I I just never know what the problem is. But excuse me, sorry. Um, I also I've played Call of Cthulhu. It was just a one off um, charity game, mm-hmm. and that was a lot of fun. It was very awkward at first i think that our gm was just a little uncomfortable and none of us knew each other so it took a while for us to engage but it was fun and it just ended very unexpectedly so i really would like to explore that game more but only in um ongoing campaigns i don't think it's a good one-off yeah it's a little hard to do uh as a one-off that one especially um your skills grow very slowly Hello, Mershadi here. We had some hardware difficulties at this point of the recording, so you will notice a difference in the sound quality. Yay for technology. Thank you so much. So with Call of Cthulhu, yeah, it's really hard to be able to grow your skill set. It, it's a very slow progression, so I can understand how um, how that one could be hard doing as a one shot unless you're like, Ugh! and then it kind of defeats the purpose of it. It's very much uh, it shows it shines as a longer campaign game. Yeah, well, and that, that's why, like, I that's why I like sometimes doing um, gaming at a con where there's already created characters and you just choose one and go mm-hmm. from there. I really like that. I work really well from an existing skeleton, like a structure of something. I can go crazy with my creativity if I don't have the burden of creating it from scratch. Mm-hmm. So um, a game like Call of Cthulhu or and. Honestly, I mean, D&D is different. It's different. It's been around long enough. There are lots of different ways to play it. 
Um, <clears throat> like, and another one too would be um, Vampire the Masquerade and everything, everything associated with that. Um, I've played it before. It's really amazing, but that that was an overwhelming experience. Our, our guidelines were a little too broad with choosing characters. We were allowed to use pretty much any playbook, which, and since I was familiar with none, that was rough. I'd never played it before, so I didn't really know how to set up my characters. And if you've ever seen the character sheets for that game, it's quite a lot. So I've played it. I do think I'd like it, but I think I would need to be with the right group you know so was it the the newer version or was it the old white wolf version how the hell would i know <laughs> i just got i just like i just made it even <laughs> worse yeah there was an old version and then a newer uh version that's based off of uh more like a 5e version so yeah um, i don't know uh yeah no that's another one that de definitely uh helps be able to um, run it as a long-term campaign as, as opposed to a, uh, as a one shot. Um, any other ones? Um, I feel like we're missing a couple. Um, oh, the, the one, the play one that you mentioned, what's it called? Oh, the, uh, oh, the plays the thing. The plays the thing. That one has my attention because it does read as a script and I am a theater nerd and, um, have studied Shakespeare and, you know, so like I, I want, you know, I just remembered another RPG I have a copy of, but it's a printed copy. So I forgot about it. And you're going to, you might know the name of it. It's a fitness oriented one. Uh, okay. Lift, lift. Oh my God. I want to play that so badly. And <laughs> um, that's like, I feel like it's own topic someday. <laughs> Yeah, no, that one's great. Uh, and if anyone doesn't have that, it is on Drive Through RPG, and it's a fitness oriented game that has like five different hacks of different RPGs. I think it's got Power by the Apocalypse. It has the D and D. It has uh, Lancer or one of the Mech ones. Uh, it has. Oh, I can't remember. There's two other ones. Oh, Vampire. Um, it has, and then two other ones. Uh, and it's great because you are doing exercises and then one person's the quote unquote GM. Um, but if you're trying to do something, you're like uh, doing like, okay, you're rolling by doing as many push-ups against the other person and then you become the gm if you do if you beat them in in push-ups or something yeah. uh, it's like it, it's gamifying exercise um i i got it and it it seemed amazing and it, i think i got it during the pandemic and yes. and i like never did anything with it because i'm lazy <laughs> yeah it is what i like about it too is you can make it as hard or challenging as you want to so you do not have to go with a suggested something like like that like that was a good example like race against the person next to you and see who can do the most push-ups or something mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be that difficult it could be something as simple as standing on one leg for a certain amount of time you know but it just gets you moving and it's funny and like and I could totally see how crazy great that would be if it was also in, you integrated some kind of drinking <laughs> aspect that would be interesting uh yeah for sure that would be interesting i wonder if i could ever run that as a convention game with drinking oh yeah it depends no on no no the, just the lift be like let's just do this as a convention game everyone needs some exercise meet you out in the courtyard and i think I, I probably would never end up having anybody show up i think that's a game i would happily run like i can see i i could see myself doing that <laughs> Are you, are you, are you, do you do a lot of fitness? Um, off and on, I was a martial arts instructor pre pandemic and oh, yeah? during the first year, um, it was still going, I guess not even a year. It seemed like a year, December, December 15th, 2020, I think was my last, it doesn't sound right. It had to be 2021 it was my last day teaching as a martial arts instructor so anyway yeah so that first year um and, and then but over the pandemic between also getting eventually succumbing to illness and then um having been injured and ill before the pandemic even hit like I had a lot of downtime I didn't so the fitness in my life wasn't so huge is coming back that doesn't mean I'm fit 
but I do fitness. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like, yeah, I do the same thing. I, I, you know, eat healthy ish mm -hmm. as in I eat food that provides nutrition. That's healthy ish. Right. Right. Exactly. 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 Um, call back to something. Oh yeah. Go ahead. All right. One game that um, isn't like any of the others we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It's called tether. Uh, yeah. And it's a two person RPG and you especially, you essentially, you write letters back and forth to each other. Um, the way I played it wasn't exactly according to the rules. We adapted the rules based on circumstance. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I like about it is um, you're telling a story about something that you see going on in your town. And you have these cards that you pull that tell you what, essentially tell you which writing prompts you're going to use to write about what's going on in the town. And you establish a few things early off, like names of some characters in town or, you know, key places. But I really like the idea that um, you're, and you're in different times, like you're, what was, it's something like 18 years apart or something. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the gap isn't well thought out in that game, the year gap, but like, so you're in two different parts of time, for whatever reason, you're able to write notes to each other. And, um, and ultimately, I don't even care how it ends. I just like the concept a lot. I like the correspondence element of it. And you could do it with email, you could do it with actual mail letters. You know, there's so many cool ways to do that. And I just, I, I, I enjoy things that can take into consideration that you can't necessarily get a team of of four to six people to play a game, but mm -hmm. you can still play a game, you know? So it's like, it's it's the notebook, the game. Yeah, which we still <laughs> haven't seen, but I know I that's what I figured. Is that what the notebook is? Yeah, I, I think so. I'm not sure. I just know it's like, it's part of the zeitgeist that it's like, people writing each other letters and and ryan gosling is in it and who is now ken the doll yeah i i, I don't know awesome. he is now he is now uh 2023 simbo i i think wasn't he too old i just realized that because i want to see that movie but he seems old for a ken you know i think everyone in that movie is either a barbie or a ken um well uh, one i'll see it didn't it but, just come out uh no i think it's coming out late actually maybe i don't know all i know is kate mckinnon's in it so it's enough that's all the reason i need yep all the reason i need <laughs> uh yeah the um where was i i had a thought hold on one second i wanted to uh call back to something a little earlier um especially in regards to gaming from the early um, probably in the eighties into now is that you weren't invited to the games because everyone invited their brothers um, as to now, which sometimes it just hasn't changed. <laughs> and sometimes it has, uh, I run a lot of, I run some games on some channels, um, PTRPG, classical Gliza, a couple other ones, um, and they make a good point of making sure that they include a lot of marginalized groups. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think honestly, early on, the games were honest. They were genuinely geared toward boys. I mean, look at the artwork. That alone would tell you. Um, this the the types of stories tend had a lot to do with like warrior behavior, and girls really just did not have. A lot of examples of warrior women and we had wonder woman who was one of my most favorite people ever in in anything i love her and man i'm trying to think and then my any other female examples that i can really think of right now of like a, of a warrior woman were animated so like tila um or shira or um female characters in thundercats you know, like I really didn't have girl examples of being strong and, and powerful and solving problems. <clears throat> and um, so I just, I mean, it wasn't geared toward, it wasn't trying to get our attention. Like at, when I was that age, everything that was trying to talk to me was My Little Pony. You know how much I would have killed to have a transformer, you know, <laughs> like 
Um, and then, but as I've seen it change over time, um, I think it's still guy oriented. And anytime you hear about a gaming group, it's almost always dudes. And the GM is usually a guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and that I think is part of what makes it challenging. I live in Utah and there's a certain kind of, uh, role that women are just naturally falling into. And, and, and so woman and, and wife are our main role just culturally that you, and so we, you know, like us wanting to play a game is not usually, we don't usually have time for that because we're busy cooking or taking care of the kids so that the dad can play, you know? Um, but then as far as like the TTRPG culture, I think one thing that happened, especially I would say in the last 10 years, or honestly, it started, I really started to be visible when gay marriage stopped being a weirdly illegal thing, you know, the, um, people started letting people be who they are a little bit and having imagination became more valued. And I think it's not just, it's tied to just how internet has grown, all the different um, creative outlets that you have on online. All of a sudden, imagination has been such a big deal and finding ways to express what you're imagining is good. And, you know, a lot of, like you said, fringe, I don't want to even say fringe, excluded groups also were being excluded from any kind of uh, athletic team, um just it, it, all kinds of office dynamics you know it, it's not just here but at least in this creative space you can be who you are you can explore who you think you are even in these spaces and get to know yourself better in a safe way because it's also imagination you know it's grown so much and with power by the apocalypse i think it that game style makes it a lot more accessible to people uh it's it's easier to dive into you don't require as much gear um it, it's i mean now i have a real attachment to the DD dice i really like all the various types of dice and the multi-sided using just <clears throat> six-sided dice is kind of boring to me and i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> you like the click clacks you like the math I, like rocks. The click -clack. I do and well and part of it is because one of the reasons i like rpgs is with the dice especially and this is why one of the reasons burning wheel is stressful to me but with the dice my need to make a decision is removed. I am severe, experiencing severe decision fatigue. And I kind of always have. I have a recent ADHD diagnosis, which is, you know, in hindsight, very unsurprising. Um, but making decisions is one of the hardest things for me to do because I weigh everything so much. With an RPG, I have dice in my hand. I don't necessarily have to make that decision. I can roll the dice and then it narrows my choices and it makes it just, it's more enjoyable to me. That's, I, that's one of my number one favorite things about our TTRPGs. So, yeah. Uh, so because of that, you were able to go, okay, well, I need to do this, you do this. And it's like, well, the, the fates have taken it upon themselves to say, yes, you can either do it or no, you can't do it. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of also helps me keep track of my stuff. So I play video games. I love Diablo, but I get real overwhelmed with all my equipment choices and keeping track of it and knowing what's good and best or whatever. I tend to play just whatever I think is coolest and then end up being like super immortal in these games on accident. Mm -hmm. The strategy of all that stuff of gear and skills is just an overwhelming thing for me there um is there a game a video game that you do play or have played that you're like this is like perfection in terms of for your AD, you know, adhd and all that kind of you know i haven't quite are you talking about a video game or ttrpg a video game yeah Oh, video games. Sweet code in. <laughs> Easily. Sweet it's code. funny because there's a lot. And you end up with, a, in this particular game, you collect like 108 playable characters and you can combine them in a, any number of ways. And some of them you don't, they're like more fringy, like they're, I don't know why I'm using the word fringe. It's my word of the day, I guess. But some of them um, would be like you t the baker. So they're not a good fighter, but they tend to like, they're constantly healing you in a battle or something. <laughs> baker? 
Yeah. Like a cook or yeah, exactly. Or Every, everything, everything comes back to food and I love it. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> anyway. So, but I love it because you can also randomize it just a little, or you can just choose best, you know, it, like they were really good at fixing some elements. So if you had a bunch of stuff in your storehouse, you could just choose, you know, please equip to everybody the best from there and you don't have to, and then you could tweak it if you want to, but, and it's going to be smart enough and intuitive enough that, I don't know, it just makes, so you don't have to keep track of everything. So Sui Koden, um, a lot of the Final Fantasy games, same. Um, I really love watching people play things like Dark Souls, but how they keep track of all of those different types of armor and weapons and is beyond me. And that's just, that's the tip of the iceberg with that game, but that's, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't even, I can't even play those games. Um, I, those aren't games that I can play. They're not part of my skill set in any way. Nope. It's one of those things I just liked. I will happily watch my son, especially because he's some kind of savant. Uh, I will watch him play that game. There's a few games like that. Red Dead Redemption is hard for me to play is disorienting for me so but i love to watch it be played you like the horsey game you're watching it's, the well, horsey game well it's got a good story that game makes you freaking cry man the first one or the second one the second one well both oh, of I've them never, you gotta I've never actually i've never actually watched the second one. Oh my goodness it's really emotional it's a beautiful game. <laughs> yeah well um let's take a break and okay. let's uh decide on a game and let's uh if you want Let's run a little one shot real quick. Sounds fantastic. Okay. Um, and we'll be right back. The following game will involve animals and zoos, escaping animals, some light action. You might also notice a slight jump when I'm introducing the game, due to my having an older copy of Lemurs on the Loose. The correct author's name is Kestrel Elliot. Thank you. Okay, we are going to be recording uh, and playing Lemurs on the Loose. So Lemurs on the Loose is a humorous one-page game about lemurs trying to escape the zoo. It is a Power by the Apocalypse game inspired by Honey Heist. You are a lemur and you're stuck in a cage and you don't want that anymore, do you? So do something about it. It's time to escape the zoo. Uh, we're going to be doing cre character creation and uh, Tiana's going to be rolling a D6 to start out. Okay, I got a four. A four. You are a ring-tailed lemur and you... Uh, your skill is jump fighting. Jump fighting, yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes those tiny humans throw things into your exhibit. Uh, which item do you have stashed away for the future? Once per game, you can use it and add 1d6 to your roll. Do you want to roll a d6 or choose an item? I'm going to roll. I'm just, I think I'm going to take this whole this particular campaign and uh leave as much to chance as i can as much to the dice okay go ahead and roll a d6 then uh five okay five would be a wallet someone threw a wallet at you at one point and uh you kept it hidden next to you cool so you have four stats if you want to write these down so your stats are clever cute scary strong and you have four points to assign to them. You can't have more than three points in any one stat. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to do two in strong um, and two in clever. Okay. So gameplay. Uh, you can't quite talk with the humans, but you can more or less understand them. And you can communicate with most other animals. Lemurs don't have prehensile tails, so no hanging by the tail, but they do have opposable thumbs and opposable toes. When you attempt to do something, roll 2d6, add the appropriate stat. Plus two if it fits within your skill. So jump fighting would be something like, you know, you're strong. Uh, so that would make sense. 
<clears throat> uh, you get a six or lower, you fail. Seven to nine is a partial success, and a 10 plus is a full success. Um, now, you said you like Monster of the Week. Uh, how uh, how much do you know about Powered by the Apocalypse? Well, the system works. I happen to be a huge fan of the Adventure Zone. Ah, yes, they did. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, you know what they've done. Yes, uh, the Adventure Zone. They started out with um, <laughs> with their uh, what was it? What was their first arc balance. called? Oh, the, the first. Balance Arc. Yes, yeah, the Balance. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, anyone who hasn't, who is listening and doesn't know about the Adventure Zone, Powered by the Apocalypse is a uh, system that was based off of Apocalypse World. Um, it is a two D six system where you just add a stat and anything that you want to do, you say that you want to do it roll and your successes are based off of a scale system uh for me i will be choosing some zoo features and the end of the game is that whether or not you escape so okay this is gonna be fun you know what i'm so excited about it was the dice who chose this but zaboomafu was a ringtail lemur and i love him oh, and well, i have a brush on the crap brothers too so this is great <laughs> listen if you don't have a the crush on the zap uh, on the brothers um are you really a human you're definitely not um in in your late 30s to mid 40s i think uh yeah that's probably <laughs> yes, true so. yeah okay are you ready i'm ready all right uh you know we have uh the scene is just like cresting over it's like morning time just like that sun is just coming over the peak and it's just like <laughs> flashing across the zoo uh what city are we in tiana what city oh maybe i should keep it close to home we're okay. in we're in ogden utah ogden utah i believe that's uh close to the zoo is the hogel zoo correct yes but do i have to be in the hogel zoo there's a little zoo north of here too but can i make can we make up the zoo yeah make up the zoo all right, let's make up the zoo. Okay, <laughs> uh, so we got the zoo. Uh, I'm gonna name it the. Uh, it's. It was a zoo that was donated by Stephen Napkin. Napkin Zoo, and it's because I just have a napkin next to me. Napkin Zoo, in what's the town north of you? The town north of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mean to disrupt your story, but you know, I live really close to a dinosaur park. Okay. In the zoo in the dinosaur park. <laughs> there we go. The di <clears throat> a dino park. That uh, sounds so cool. I just just call it Dino Zoo. The Dino okay. Zoo, and for whatever reason, they have just a couple. It, it is also it's just a dinosaur park and a zoo at the same time. You know, the city just like has to meld things because you know they don't offer enough resources for the town. As everyone, uh, as you got the. Uh, all the employees going through and grabbing all the trash and making sure everything's taken care of and all the zoo keepers are coming around and feeding and feeding the animals we we come in to our our main character our bring-tailed lemur what are you doing right now i'm uh secretly rifling through my hidden wallet <laughs> what's in that hidden wallet there is is oh, it a prison wow. wallet? Is that what it is? <laughs> no. No. That's gross. There is a lot of money, like cash. So I've had this wallet for a while. Because no, no one has cash anymore. I've had it for a while. And there are pictures. And I love to look at the pictures. They're intriguing. Do you understand what's on these pictures? Like, who is, is there anything on these pictures that are really intriguing to you? Uh, I mean, there's people, but I really, I'm excited about the little person that's holding the hand of the bigger people, mm -hmm. but they just, uh, they just look really excited, which mm -hmm. I, I like to see that. I see that a lot just from my cage. I see a lot of excited faces. <laughs> okay. Little, little, little people. As you, as you're staring at your wallet and staring at the little people, you hear a rattle uh, next to your cage and uh, you notice the the human who is always there the same morning every every morning to bring you your food uh, what's your favorite food that he always brings you in the morning watermelon watermelon this morning he does have just these the little cubes of watermelon um and he's got it in, in the little dish uh and what what is it that he calls you 
Uh, oh no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say he calls you Zabu. <laughs> no, we can't. Okay. That's well, because. Still... No. Okay. <laughs> okay. We still want to steal um, their idea. Well, you know what? It's because human humans are, are are predictable creatures, and they don't know know any better. That's... Okay, it's like if someone has a golden retriever and they call him Bud because Air Bud is a golden retriever, right? Or, or just Buddy, <laughs> Bud, yeah. Buddy, all those same things. Okay. Or uh, what's the uh, what's the golden retriever's name from uh, uh... Chance? No, Chance. that's the other dog. The other yeah. dog. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so he comes over and just like puts it over by your dish, uh, and he and he goes to look at you and goes to goes to pet you on the hat on the head. He's not he's not supposed to do that uh, on a personal note. <laughs> what do you do? Um, I just duck my head and do the little slappy slap, like with my <laughs> hand, just like kind of like a cat slap. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. And he's like, ah, you're funny. And he goes to goes to leave. Um, what do you do as he as he goes to leave? It's like kind of just kind of slow motions. Well, well, I'm gonna eat my watermelon. You're gonna eat your watermelon. Yeah. Okay. Um, I gotta I gotta have some energy because I'm getting out of this joint. All right, <laughs> you're getting out of the joint. All right, the door closes and the park opens up. Um. Next to your enclosure is the um, is also the T Rex enclosure. So you all throughout the day you hear, you know, all, all day long because uh, every single one of those things has to have like the the same yell and it's just constantly going back and forth. You have a bunch of kids coming coming towards you and they're just constantly throwing your popcorn and and peanuts and occasionally keys. <laughs> yeah. What do you do from here? Like, how are you going to escape from this cage? Um, well, what I've noticed is um, every morning they have to turn on the uh, dinosaur animatronic thing. Mm -hmm. And every night they have to turn it off. And I've noticed that they are um, really, they just lean against my cage. I've noticed that it's like, the door pushes in toward me a little bit when they do that. They, mm -hmm. It's a cramped space and there's not a high, not a big budget. Okay. Yeah. So I've noticed that. I've started to see this gap between the door of my cage and the walls of my cage. And I and I'm thinking I can fit through there. Okay. So are you gonna check out that door then right now? Uh well, right. Yeah, because kids they're kind of leaning against it, so I can see it wiggle. Okay. As you see, uh, kids are just kind of like banging against it. You do see it like. Yeah, it's waggling. I Well, I want to pay really close attention to how it's doing it because I'm clever. Uh, yeah. I'm strong. So I'm thinking I might try tugging on it at the same time as they're pushing just to see what happens. Okay. Uh, roll, me, roll me a clever on that. So two, so right? 2D, yep, 2D6 plus, plus your clever. Okay. So I got a five plus two is seven. Okay. Um, with the seven, you do notice that it, they're they're kind of pushing on it and you probably could sneak right through if you time it just right, but you're not, not seeing um, a way to be able to open it completely. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, the, I mean, those are just kids. Those are just the small humans. So uh -huh. they're not very strong. No. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna have to wait till someone bigger. As you um are like kind of just addressing it, you start seeing little little fingers kind of kind of going through the door jam, just like and just like a kid's trying to yeah, like a kid's trying to kind of fiddle with it and just kind of like get get their hand inside the door because you know kids like going inside places they're not supposed to. What do you do? I think, I mean, I think I'm going to grab their finger and pull. I'm just going <laughs> to okay, go pull on it. You're able yeah. to do that just fine. Yes, you go over and just like, huh, like you start hearing this, this like <laughs> scream. <laughs> do you hold on tight? 
Yeah, I'm gonna hold on tight. Okay. This he like he pulls on uh pulls a, he pulls his hand back and then your head's like popping through and in front of you you see this kid who's way bigger than you staring right at you so we're like face to face face to face or yep in the gap what do you do um i think i'm gonna lick their nose (laughs) (laughs) uh i think that's a cute go ahead and roll me a cute oh my cute is so low i got a seven okay um as you as you go (laughs) <laughs> and go to lick them they just ah, and they run away um everyone's just like what the hell and looks away you now have a chance to 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 get get out do you take that chance i do take that chance you zoom out of that that place around you what you see is obviously the enclosure um not the enclosure the uh dinosaur uh, exhibit right next to you uh the t- for the t-rex across from you um you see <clears throat> oh excuse me uh the amphitheater where they have like where where they have all of the uh, uh exhibits for like the predator birds every every couple of hours and to the left of you you have the playground where all the kids always play what do you do uh i think i'm gonna head toward the animatronic the the dinosaur i i hear it and i can kind of see it sometimes mm-hmm. from the cage and i, I just kind of want a closer look i've been listening to that for years okay um so you head you head to your right and you just start you book it across all uh it's 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 midday so there's like lots of lots of feet everywhere are you just gonna book it straight across no i think i'm gonna uh hug the edges just a little bit Okay, um, I'm gonna ask you to roll me a clever on that one to okay. try to hide. I got uh, an eight plus two, ten. Nice. You are able to keep keep to the edges of of everything and keep into the shadows, um, and just like sneak through. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And we're able to make it to, to the other side. No one saw you. Everyone was paying attention to that kid who just decided to take off. And now he's crying. He's like, oh, something like me. I just got out of my rape. Like his parents are like, you know what? Just shut up, kid. Right. Like, They're really tired and whiny. It's hot. Like it's yeah. okay. You know what? It's time to go home. Okay. We'll come back tomorrow. You can see that way you can see everything else. Blah, 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 blah. And they're just like walking off. You're over by the T-Rex exhibit now. Are you, where are you at by, by his feet? Are you like underneath? Are you hiding in the bushes? I'm in the bushes. Yeah. Right by, right. I mean, it's right up against the T-Rex, like the near the tail, but Mm -hmm. I'm in the bushes. Okay. Um, As you stare out from these bushes, uh, you, you see back to the cage that you used to be in and you see the zookeeper who comes and checks in on the animals and you see them open the cage and they notice that you're gone and they run back out. They know that you're gone now, that you are missing from your cage. What do you do? So let me ask, is this um, exhibit outdoors or indoors? It is outdoors. Okay. Um, let's see. So I've already gotten away. I want to go further back into the dinosaur exhibit further away from where the cages are. Okay. Um, yeah, you were able to just turn, turn right around. Um, and as you turn around, you can, you can see that there are, it, it is an indoor dinosaur exhibit, um, heading that way. Um, and then heading back out into the other side, which is still in the outdoor, you see a food court. So then there is just a ton of people. So in your direct path is either go inside or go into the food court where there's a lot of people. What do you do? Uh, like, w- what is it inside? Is it like museum stuff, gift shop? What? You've never been in there? It's just kind of dark. Oh, it's, just, it's just a way. Yeah. I think, I think I'm going to head inside. I'm used to being inside. Okay. Um, as you as you head inside, 
you can you can I, i'm going to let you you know you're still like in that hidden mode and you just like whoop slip in inside the door and inside you see just the same kind of giant animatronics just like the t-rex but they're all over along the walls one's hanging in the ceiling with these huge wings um and inside is everyone more more feet more animals i mean more of these humans that are just walking around what do you do i am gonna stare in awe at all the awesome stuff i had no idea there could be this many i only knew about the ones that were by my cage this world has now expanded for you like there there's more to me um next to you you hear talking and you like like we said in the the beginning of this game you can kind of understand humans and you can hear the name that they call you missing fan out so they're getting closer and closer to you what do you do um i think that i am um, gonna jump up onto one of the displays like get you know so i can get behind some stuff to get above where the humans are okay um the nearest display to you is a triceratops not that you know what they're called but there's triceratops as you like just like hoo, hoo, hoo. i want you to roll me a uh strong i got eight no sorry i can't do math i got a nine a nine okay <laughs> yeah. um you're able to easily climb up um you know, you're taking taking the nose, taking the taking the horns, um, but your your tail just kind of flashes in front of someone, and a little kid just goes, "Monkey!" And so, and everyone's like, "What?" And they start looking towards you, and they and they see, and they're like, "Hey, what's that? Is that a squirrel? No, I think it's a monkey. Are you sure?" I'm just gonna freeze. Like you're gonna I'm freeze, gonna... freeze right behind the behind the ter- ter- triceratops, just like just hanging there right there. Yeah, like I'm part of the display. Like part of the display. Okay. Um, brown mouths from the outside. You see more of the zookeepers just come inside and looking around. I want you to rule me a clever. I got a seven. A seven. You're able to hide what you're doing you're very very still but the zookeeper comes over and he's like well, what's going on and he starts starting to ask questions bro well, yeah I, what do you mean you saw a monkey blah, 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 blah. and he starts investigating looking at what everyone was saying where where apparently a monkey was and so he starts climbing over the exhibit and he's starting to look up and around because he knows that he's looking for you as a what do you do um i think i'm just gonna i'm gonna you are a jump fighting lemur yeah that's what i'm thinking but <laughs> i feel like i just want to jump higher at this point because you said that they're they're even like the winged mm-hmm. so they're gonna be hanging from i want to jump higher whatever okay. uh do me uh Let's go with the strong. You're gonna like just like hoo, 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 hoo. Yeah, I dropped a big time. Uh I got nine. Okay. Um as the as the zookeeper kind of like crests up above the the tri- tri- triceratops head, he you both lock eyes <laughs> right <laughs> at each other as you take a flying leap, just like jump off of his head and just in very lemur fashion you know you just see that (laughs) and get onto that wing and it the wing starts like the you know the pterodactyl just starts like swinging back and forth back and forth you are kind of losing your perch a little bit um you are now everyone is looking at you and you're not going to be able to sneak away from this okay what do you do from now uh, I think I'm just going to keep jumping. I mean, I'm just going to wildly jump, hopefully higher when I can, but just away toward um, 
until I can find an opening, any kind of opening. Okay. That Above you, uh, now these pterodactyl pterodactyls are being held up by like wires up to the ceiling into the into the top of the top of the ceiling and the roof. So you can try to climb up, or you can keep like trying to jump jump around. Which one do you want to try? I'm gonna jump around. Okay, go ahead and jump around. Um, you've already kind of like done it a little bit, so you're just cool. Oh, you kind of time it, time it with the swing. You, Go all the way to the end of the building. The zookeepers following following you because you can see you each time you jump uh, until you reach to the end, and there's no more pterodactyl to jump on. There's only a wall in front of you, the door underneath you, and the zookeeper who's now on the radio. I found them. I found. I found it. What do you do? So, um, you said the door is below me. That's uh -huh. the only opening that's around. Yep. Um, I think I'm just going to head for the door. Okay. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I mean, if he's right down there too, I might boing right off of him. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, head out the door. <laughs> are you going to like, try to like, just like, just trampoline off of him? Or are you going to try to like, like maybe like, just like scratch him up and run away from him or? Uh, I, I just want to get away. So I'm just going to bounce. Okay. Know. All right. Go ahead and roll me a strong. Okay. Not to be loud about moving stuff since I have to use my laptop microphone. Okay. Um, nine plus two is eleven. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, you're able. You, uh, you jump off that tower. Yeah, you know, it's just like cool. You, as he is like, still calling on that radio. Oh, uh, you smack him right in the head as he just you springboard right out that window i mean the, sorry not the window the doorway and everyone who's coming in that doorway just kind of spread around around you um in front of you you see uh the outside it's the outside again right into a cotton candy machine yeah. and you're right, right you're right balanced precariously there what a terrifying vortex <laughs> yeah and you see just like <laughs> what do you do well i mean i'm pretty good at jumping so it wouldn't be hard for me to just like leap and change trajectory so i'm just gonna bounce i'm i'm wildly bouncing at this point why stop now okay um from there you just like you do you know do do backflip <laughs> This is now like the main thoroughfare. Like it's the every every location has just one one main alleyway from beginning to end, and you see what looks like a like a gateway, right? And you you see the outside, you see the outdoors, um, but it is through a mass of people. Do you go for it? Um. So that's that's all that's ahead of me. It's just essentially like a narrow path to an exit. Yeah, it's kind of like how, like how you go through Disneyland. It's just everyone's getting funneled out. Yeah, I think I'm going to just try to, because I'm like around toddler height at this point, and I'm fast. I think I can move through that quite a bit. Okay, okay. so as, as you take down, um, take off. It's like you're just going through. I want you to roll me a, a clever trying to get through all these legs. Um, eight plus two, ten. Oh, nice. You're able to um, wrap around everyone's legs. And everyone's like, what? Huh? What? Huh? What? As you hear the zookeepers, now a few of them are running after you and they're just getting bumped, bumped across. They can't get through everybody because you are cleverly going through everyone's legs. You get to the end um, to what looks like you understand as a human, the ticket counter. And it's those like, you know, like the crunk, crunk, crunk ones yeah. uh and on the other side you see what it what looks like cars do you do you do you jump through like jump through the turnstile thing yeah the turnstiles thank you uh yeah yeah i mean not like high i'm i'm keeping it low i can't really jump high anyway i feel like there's backpacks and strollers and everything um but i'm so i'm gonna like just just kind of try to like slink to the side of the door like okay um roll me uh 
roll me a another clever. Man, this set, I gotta remember these dice. Like so I got an eight plus two. Okay. Um <laughs> you you slid to a, a start, I mean to a stop, and you just kind of like whoo, go off to the side. The zookeepers go right past you thinking you've already escaped. Yeah. And they're like outside looking for you. Um, as you stare across and just, you know, like that, like do 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 and just walk out past them. And as you stroll stroll on past them and you go into the trees, just like out of your out of, out of your 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 side, you got you got your wallet and another piece of watermelon. Just <laughs> living the dream. Living the dream. Now you got you got enough cash and some watermelon on your hand to make it back to Madagascar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> And that's our little one page of lemurs on the loose. Good job, me. In real life, I would not be that uh, agile. <laughs> you would not be that agile. Not that agile. Oh boy, that's a that's a that's a nice little game, especially uh, um, just for just something quick. You know what um, I like about it? I was just thinking of like uses of a game like that in mm-hmm. particular. How great would that be with? Um, kids like if you're teaching and you're having a hard time getting them focused like you could actually do something like this with a whole classroom full of students even if it was just one lemur right yeah they all just kind of take turns choosing an action or I'm always into gamifying things anyway I don't have the energy to do it but I can imagine the gamification of stuff yeah and that's what's what's great about um especially open games like this it's because it makes it easier to introduce people into games Mm -hmm. um i felt like that was a great warm-up you know like to play that as like an intro before you sit in like you get started on a big session of something else Mm -hmm. like it kind of loosens you up kind of gets your imagination activated i like that's what it felt like it did it felt like a really great warm-up or like you know like in tv shows they have somebody like a comedian in the crowd or something for the live studio audience they're telling yeah. jokes before the show starts stuff like that you know yeah no that yeah, it would be a, a great improv like just yeah. like an improv game you're like let's just do this like someone give me a g- give me a place <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that was well. fun uh, well, Tiana, thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, this has been a great experience. It's going to be a great first episode. Let's uh, let's wrap this up with uh, some of your outro <laughs> outro information. Can you tell us what uh, where we can find you, what your current projects are, and anything else that you want to let us, let us know? Uh, right now, I am. I just finished up a film project at Weber State University with a student group. It's called Lawn Wars. Uh, we just did had our first screening of the film a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's still in kind of in post-production, like we screened it before we were finished cleaning it all up, just to so that everybody who worked on it had a chance to see it in its roughness. But we want to put that in some film festivals. So I just finished that. And then I have some other just small projects coming up that don't have titles. <laughs> So that's, we'll see where you can find me. Um, I'm changing up all my social media a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not out there like I used to be. So my, my world is changing. So you're just going to have to remember the spelling of my name and watch for me in IMDB, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, I'll I'll put it in the, in the show notes and everything, but how do you spell your name? T-E-A-U-H-N-A. And, and that is pronounced Tiana. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. And if you say Tiana, <laughs> I'll still accept that. Right, we will accept it. Yes. Uh, well, thank you so much. And uh, please join us next time on uh, Wish I Could Play. Thank you. This was fun. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please email guests at moreshoddyplays.games with your contact information. Thank you for listening to Wish I Could Play.